Hi and welcome back to the channel. This live match is round two of the Isaac Walton Fishery Midweek Silverfish League. I've drawn Canal Peg 14. As you can see, I'm not at my peg when the match starts. I went to open my worms to cut some up ready to start and realised I hadn't got as many as I thought I had. I must have used more when I was on bottom pool last week. So I had to go running down to bottom pool to my mate Weza to go and scrounge a few off him. And obviously I was late getting back to my peg. Not to worry. I've drawn canal peg 14, which is an end peg. It's just before the bend at the end of the pool. And peg 10, which should have been occupied by Rich Pedler, is empty because he's got COVID, so he's not turned up. This leaves me a bit worried that I've got too much room. I have got a lot of room between me and the next bloke. Neil Dale's the next peg down, which is quite far away. And then round the other side, I've got uh, Stormer, Mark Capewell, on peg 25. Cracking angler on a good peg, a form peg as well. So I've got my work cut out to beat him today. Now the middle of the pool is where the skimmers tend to be caught most. So... I'm not sure whether I'll catch many today, but we'll see. Also, with me having so much room and it being so mild, I might get a lot of carp trouble today or F1 trouble because there is a lot of F1s in here. So the plan is I'm going to fish two track lines. The track line to my right, I'm putting just crushed expander with a few casters in, just one ball. And then to the left, I'm putting a ball of crushed expander again with casters and I'm adding some worm and micros to this ball. Now I'm going to put a line to my left just down the shelf at top two and two with the same worms and ground bait and casters. And to my right, I'm just going to throw casters down the shelf just to see what happens, see the difference, see which one works best. And then over to the far bank, I'm just going to lose feed casters. Hopefully catch some roach before I get pestered by F1s. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I will do at some point. So I'm going to start on double maggot over the top of the ball to my right. Where I've just put the ground bait with a few casters in. And see if I can catch me an early skimmer or two. There's a little bit of condensation in the corner of the cameras. It does clear up as the cameras warm up. I've had them on for an hour before the start of the match to try and get them warmed up before the match started, but there's still a little bit of condensation on it. It does wear off. This canal pool is quite a deep pool in the middle. It's got to be close on six foot deep and it shelves up quite late towards the island. So it stays quite deep all the way across. It deepens off really close to the inside and then shallows up tight across so that quick look on the maggot has produced one little roach so i'm going to try the worm on my left hand line now and see if there's any skimmers over the ground bait and worms same as last week i put the tail of a dad rabina on it's exactly the same depth on both of these lines and i've got two rigs set up one's a 4 by 16 f1 maggot with O10s and a size 16 SFL. And on the left hand line, the worm line, I've got a Preston Kerry in half a gram with a double bulk. And I've got a size 14 SFL on this one. And the first fish I catch here is a gudgeon. That's not ideal. Don't big gudgeon, mind. That hasn't worked. So I'm going back on the maggot rig. Again with some maggots on the hook. Two, double red maggot. And I've put a little pot on. And I've put a little ball of crushed expander in the pot. And see what happens with this.
drop the nugget in, and then lay the rig behind it. I've fed casters on all my lines except for this one. So I'm loose feeding casters down the left, down the right, out to the left in the middle, over to the far bank, but I'm not feeding any casters on this line. I'm just putting ground bait in with a few casters mixed into it. I don't want to loose feed this line yet. I want to try and see which way is best to feed them. So that was an half decent little roach. Not the intended species, but a decent stamp fish anyway. So I'm not complaining. We'll try it again. It's got around three points of casters with me. So I've got enough to feed all the lines. That hasn't worked, so I'm dropping it back over the worm line to see if there's anything there again. And I hook a carp. First one of the day. This is only about 20 minutes into the match and I've already hooked a carp. I'm using my Duraslip 5 again. I've really got to like this over the last couple of weeks. And it's surprising how much stick you can give it and what size fish you can get out with it. Yeah, I'm not very happy, look. I'm wasting time here. There is a carp super pool where everybody's paid a pound and the highest way to carp will win something. But I don't want to fish for carp. I've come here to try and win the Silverfish League. And all the time I'm playing carp, I'm just wasting time, basically. But never mind. It's a bit slow early doors anyway, so at least it's given me something to do. You can see how much bending my top kit there is to how much pressure I'm putting on this fish. And I'm only fishing out tens. Surprising what size fish you can get out on light tackle. And there we go. He's in. Now that's a decent fish, that is. Out 10 bottom, 5's elastic. Don't want it, but he'll go in the carp net. I'm sure I'll catch a few more.
So we'll go back on the right hand line and have another look over there. Still avoiding feeding casters over it. But feeding them everywhere else. Including catapulting some to the far bank. It's about two and a half feet deep, just short of the bank, but then it shelves up to really shallow water. And this just isn't working on this line. I just can't seem to get them skimmers to come and have a go. Either that, or I'm fishing in the wrong places for them. Back over to the left hand line. And we're nearly an hour into the match now and I'm I'm feeling like this is going nowhere. I'm just catching the odd little fish and I'm really struggling. By the sound of it though, nobody's really catching. So I'm having a look down the shelves now to see if there's anything about down there. Starting off on the left hand line and I don't get a bite there. Dropping it on the right hand line and it goes straight down the hole pretty much. And I've had an half decent perch. I'm laying the rig out because I'm laying it against the shelf here. It does start to slope up pretty steep after where I'm just short of where I'm fishing. Between my pole tip and the bank, it starts shallowing up pretty quickly. So I'm laying the rig out into the lake and letting it come back against the shelf. Again, this is another 4 by 16 F1 maggot rig, this. Again, with a size 16 SFL B to O tens. One bite there, that's all. Time to go and have a look on the far bank, see if there's any roach over there on the caster. There we go. That didn't take too long. Hopefully there's a few of these over there to get me up and running. We're over an hour into the match now and I've got virtually nothing in the net. A few of these would be handy.
that's better i've got my power roller too low i'm gonna have to get up and change it in a bit these are a decent stamp as well these are this will do catch these for a bit And it's one to chuck for a while. Happy days. But now this won't last long because I'm pretty confident that the F1s will turn up and spoil the party. Just try and make the most of it while I can. So they're decent stamp fish these are. Four ounce. If you can keep them coming, I'll build the weight. I'm just fishing on the deck at the minute. And this is a 4x10 F1 maggot, this is. With a shirt button style shotting pattern. Again, a size 16 SFL B to O10. And here we go, with first F1. I was hoping I'd catch a few more before this happened. Never mind. My roach have got smaller as well now. I wonder if them F1s have spooked the bigger ones away. Hopefully that was just a rogue F1. Weather's turned a bit cooler now, so I've got my jumper on. And I'm thinking I've got another F1 on here. Pulling like mad, stripping like mad, trying to rush him out. I only realised just before I go to net it that it's a chub. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nice fish, nice bonus fish today, that is. I'm actually on the shallow rig there because I was starting to miss a few bites on the deck. So it was obvious to me that the fish were coming up in the water. So I picked up the shallow rig and the first fish I hook on it is that nice chub. Hopefully I'll catch a few of them.
I'd have perhaps took my time a little bit more if I'd have realised it was a chub instead of racing it back and stripping the elastic like crazy. There's still the odd roach about. Plus a bonus skimmer. Never expected to catch that over there in that water. Not complaining. Keep them coming. Take it over nicely. Just switching through the rigs now to just figure out which is the best. Those last couple of fish were back on the deck. I've picked up the shallow rig again. And I'm back in touch with them again. Just that little too big to swing. Switching between the depths, going up and down. Fish keep coming up and going back down, moving about in the water, so you've got to Follow suit with your rigs. Little lean on that line again. So we'll try the track again and see if anything's turned up. And this is my first skimmer out the track. Not a big fish. But I won't mind catching a few of those. You'll notice I'm putting a caster on there. I've started loose feeding casters over that line to my right. Because just putting ground bait in and fishing maggots over the top of it just wasn't working. So I've started feeding casters over the top of it. And it's made the peg a little bit better. Still not brilliant. But there are some fish that get in there now. The odd skimmer and the odd roach. It's definitely made an improvement starting to feed those casters out of that line. Massive improvement on this line, putting the casters in over the top. Things are starting to look up a bit now.
Oh, there's another decent roach. Starting to get a steady stream of roach and skimmers on this line now. There's some big skimmers in this lake as well. It'd be nice to catch a few of those. I'm talking upwards of two pound. I've not seen one yet, but you can catch them occasionally. In the past, when I've been on this lake, you usually catch them shallow down the middle. Besides fish, you? You still bagging? What are you? I'm not catching so many skimmers over here. Well, what you got? Hey? No, I don't want to bother. Why do I bother? Hey, you bother? Have you got £10 yet? Just talking to Stormer there, see how he's getting on. He's telling me he's got a couple of pounds. Well, I've told him I got a six ounce. <laughs> but I could hear him dropping fish in his net early on, so he had a good start. He did when I had a really bad start. He reckons he's not catching so much now, so hopefully I'm doing a bit better than him at this point. But not being able to see him, I haven't got a clue whether he's catching or not. Time for another little top up on that line as it's drying up again. Put another ball of ground bait in with a few casters in and then just keep loose feeding over the top. And I'm going to go over back over to the far bank again. See if I can catch some more roach. Keep moving through the lines, just try and keep fish coming. And there's still a few over there at the moment. Not the biggest stamp of fish, but they'll do. Keep putting some ounces in the net. Want to do all I can to get good section points. So as long as I'm putting fish in the net, I feel as if I'm doing okay. Bit awkward shipping back there. You've got a hedge row about four metres behind you. And you've got to weave it through. You can see I've hired my roller up. Here's an F1. Come to spoil it again. I'd be happy any other time catching these, but not today.
Nice damp fish as well, look. Just when I think that's it, I'll go and catch another roach. Still the odd roach over there. It's worth putting up with the F1s while you're still catching the odd roach. Obviously the odd skimmer as well. Look, there's another skimmer. And here's another F1. Starting to get more frequent bites off these now. And that one's fell looked. So, time to avoid them, get off it, and get back down the track. That line's not producing as well as it should, so I'll look down the edge again, or down the shelf, and it goes straight down the hole. To bream. Get on the single caster. Taking my time with this one, it's a nice fish. There you go. That's a real bonus fish today, that is. Pound and a half. One looks himself for me as well. Leaf it out. There's a lot of debris up there, a lot of leaves on the top. I'm having to guide the rig in to try and avoid the leaves that are down there. 
is another bite. It's that grain bait starting to work down that shelf on that side now. A couple of times I've looked on it before, I've not had an indication. I've kept putting casters in. That's a nice perch, that is. So, I've had a decent perch and a skimmer down that line. I've only had one perch to the right where I've just lose fed casters. So, I'm now going to put a ball of chopped worm, ground bait and casters into the right. And see if that line will come good at some point. Got nothing to lose on this line because I'm not catching any fish there at all. I went all through the mash thinking to myself ground bait wasn't right because I wasn't catching as well as I should do. But eventually it started kicking in. Especially down these shelves. Down the track. It was okay. The left hand line was rubbish. Yeah, oh, look, he's me little, slowed that down, look. Little Robin come and landed on my top of my camera. See his little foot? <laughs> he sat behind me most of the day and I kept throwing him maggots onto the path behind me. And he kept coming and taking them. There it goes, it look dropping down onto my riddle. Caught my eye there, look. I'll throw some maggots down in a minute. Having an early look on that ground bait line down the shelf, see if there's anything turned up quickly. Feeding the robin. Does the maggots or so? Keep him happy. Wish the fish fed as freely as he did. And that was now good. So I'm going to have a quick look on my track line with my down the shelf rig. It's probably about, it's three to five inches off, off bottom this is. We'll see if there's anything there off the bottom. And there is, I'll get a bite straight away. And it's another F1. Not a big one, but it's an F1 nonetheless. Oh. I'll go into my car net though. Give it another top up. I've had that bream and that perch down that left hand side now. I'm going to give it another ball down there and see if I can attract another one into that line. Still going to throw casters over the top. And we're going to have another look over. See if I can catch me some more roach for a bit. For all the seems to be over there is F1's name. Seems like they've pushed all the roach and skimmers out. And that's all that's there to feed. They've bullied all the roach and skimmers out. 
and they've decided they want everything that's there. It's an F1 a chuck. got to the point where I decided to stop feeding casters over because all that was over there was F1s. So I'm going to concentrate on the two track lines and the two down the shelf lines for a bit. There's another little skimmer. Just keep the odd ones of these coming off each line, I'll be happy. Definitely start to get a few more indications now. The key is feeding those casters, I think. Putting the odd ball of ground bait in and then feeding casters over the top. And then you get pestered with the odd F1 down the track as well. I'm all out with the shop. And yet another. The third and fourth hours of the match were an absolute nightmare with F1s. I couldn't seem to get a rig in anywhere, over, or even in the track, without catching a run of F1s. And when there's F1s in your peg, you're not going to catch anything else. Giving another look over, catch an F1, down the track, catch an F1. Absolute nightmare. I'm sure if it had been a normal open match, I'd have had a right weight fishing for everything that swims. I could have had a big weight of F1s on this match if it had been just a normal open. You've just got to fish through it and try your best. And eventually you catch the odd better, well, the odd right species fish. It's just the odd skimmer coming. Before you look another carp or F1 even.
giving me a right run around this one, Isaac. There he goes. So I got to the stage where I just give up on everything and just fish down the shelves, either side of me. Got to a stage where it didn't matter where I went in the peg, I'd just catch an F1. The only lines that seemed to be any good towards the end were down the shelves on the insides. And that's where I'd had my biggest skimmer anyway. I've got another bigger one now. Lovely. Another pound plus fish. But even here I'm catching carp now, look. You could tell I was disappointed by how my head went then. It's definitely a carp, this one is making a run down the pool and he's brought me. Time for a new hook length. Considering all the F1s and carp I've up today, this is the first hook length I've broke. I'm sure if I'd have been fishing for him and taken a bit more time, I'd have got him out as well. But I haven't got time to waste. Drop down the right hand side. I've got a decent skimmer here now. Putting that ground bait in was the right thing to do. That lovely. Like I said, the third and fourth hours were an absolute nightmare for carp and F1s. But the last hour was pretty steady. Of course, I was still catching carp. And there's another carp. He's going to do, mate. And he has. That's another one broke, mate. New hook length again. I'm running out of hooks now. <laughs> That's two hook lengths in five minutes, that is. But it's worth persisting down these shelves because... I am catching the odd skimmer as well and the odd roach and the bites I'm having off F1s and carp is less frequent than anywhere else in the peg and I'm definitely worth catching these skimmers are Not massive fish, most of them, but white builders. There you go, there's another four or five ounce. decent one so my dad this venue 
canal and middle pools you can catch your skimmers really close into the bank just down the shelves unless you knew about it you wouldn't fish there really not expecting to catch skimmers anyway but it does seem to be the best lines at times especially the last hour I mean this has been really good last hour I'm not intending on going anywhere else in the peg for the rest of the match. Even though I catch the odd carp down there, I am having more joy out of these lines. Another decent carp, see? Out ends, fives elastic. Surprising what you can get out on it. And there we go, that's the end of the match. And guess what? I've got another carp on. <laughs> carp on again. That was everywhere, to be fair. Loads of carp, loads of F1s, but I've managed to catch a few silvers in between. Let's hope it's enough to do any good in the section. I reckon I could have had hundred and fifty pound here today for the fish club. It's been solid. I think I could have had a really big wide today if everything had accounted. I probably had about 30 odd pound of carp just trying to avoid them. I never bothered weighing them in because Ed had weighed 60 pound on the bottom pool. So I'm just weighing my silvers. And I'm quite surprised that I weighed 17 pound 9 ounces. Obviously that bonus chub has helped. And then three decent skimmers along with the smaller ones. Cracking net of fish at the end. And that was enough to win the pool. Stormer was second with 14 pound. So that's me on a perfect two point score after two rounds. Over the moon with that. Long may it continue. <laughs> so if you enjoyed watching that, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. I could have had a little bit of a 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 bit